Hi, this is David. Welcome to the Stream of David. When I first started receiving the stream, one of the first questions that inevitably came up was why we're here. It's been said that all humans question their existence at some point, and I certainly did from a very young age. I was raised Christian, where you're taught that if you obey God, that if you follow the church's prescribed set of rules, when you die, you'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. For a while in my teens, I was kicked out of my mother's home, and I lived with a friend who lived uh, out in the country with his aunt and uncle. The aunt and uncle were very religious and attended a small country Baptist church known as a primitive Baptist church. Primitive Baptists are the most extreme version of Christianity that I have encountered. They don't believe in mixed bathing, which means men and women cannot swim together. They don't believe in dancing. And there's a whole host of other things that they don't allow you to do. Now, as a wild teenager who had started drinking and smoking weed and having sex by age 14, coming into an environment like this was very interesting for me. You see, their belief was very strong that every human is placed here to obey God's laws and that the real fun starts after death. I have to say that my uh, brief time living with them, uh, it was only about six months, was very good for me. It was, it was what I needed at that time. I was certainly out of control. I was a wild child, and I needed to be reined in a little bit, and they certainly provided that opportunity. Not because I prescribed to their beliefs. I never let go and, and went that far, but certainly seeing a different side of life was humbling to me, and I realized that there was more to life at that point than just drinking and smoking weed and having sex. By the time I reached my 20s, I identified as an atheist. And of course, in atheism, you do not believe in a consciousness beyond your physically manifested life. And with all of the quote-unquote supernatural experiences I'd had at that point, uh, atheism obviously did not make sense for me. It was really just my reaction to my disdain for organized religion. I didn't like the freedom that it took away uh, the encumbrances of the rules, and what I perceived as a requirement that I actually disconnect from my true spiritual side. Once I began meditating and receiving the stream and, and gaining access to the clarity that they brought, I came to understand what physically manifested existence is really all about, and it helped me focus on my life's purpose, which is, by the way, my choice. Your life's purpose is always your choice, and you're going to learn that from the stream. So now I'll take a quick break, and when I come back, you'll be hearing directly from the stream. We are here, David. We have come with the intention of speaking to you about your purpose on planet Earth, why you have chosen to manifest in the physical form, and why you choose to manifest in physical form over and over again. If you have listened to us before, you have heard us say, that we are a stream of powerful energy, the origin of all creation, and that this stream is comprised of infinite strands of consciousness. These strands of consciousness are often referred to as souls. These strands are independent streams of energy consciousness bound together with other like strands into infinity. These infinitely bound strands create what you refer to as source energy. Therefore, source energy is an infinite stream of collective consciousness. This consciousness knows no time, has no beginning, has no end, and only increases in momentum. This ever-increasing momentum drives all creation. And without new creation, the energy would become static. It would subside, and the universe would cease to be. You are powered by one of these strands of powerful energy. It is what you refer to as your soul, and it is part of the greater collective consciousness. 
you are part of and exist as what you refer to as source energy. And when you exist exclusively as source energy, meaning that you are not physically manifested, you are what we refer to as existing in a completed state. Your existence in a completed state has been referred to as nirvana, as heaven, and as being one with God. These references are accurate in that reaching a state of completion is reaching a state of perfection. But perfection becomes boring and does not provide expansion. You have a saying that what does not kill you makes you stronger. While in a state of completion, nothing can kill you. But you are also not becoming stronger. You are not contributing to the expansion of energy required to drive new creation. So you choose to project your energy and manifest in physical form. Think of this physical manifestation like a vacation from your completed self. On planet Earth, you take vacations to experience new things, to recharge your batteries, and to return to your everyday life with new experiences to share. Perhaps you have a favorite vacation destination that you choose to return to again and again for this regeneration of energy. This is a simple analogy, but very closely and accurately describes why you choose to come here again and again and again to recharge your batteries and experience growth. So you project into a physically manifested body. You come with the intention of being free and seeking joy. And you place obstacles in your path for the joy of overcoming them. So now you ask the difficult questions. Why would I choose to be born into a situation where I'm sick? Why would I choose to be a fetus that is aborted? Why would I choose to be born into a war zone or starvation or drought? If I'm placing obstacles in my path, surely I'm going to choose obstacles that I can easily overcome. And we say that that is from your human perspective. From our perspective, what you call life comes and goes very easily and very often. You have manifested in physical form many times, and you will manifest many more into infinity. This linear time here on your planet is like a speck of dust in our realm. It is minuscule in comparison to your full existence. If you are hit by a bus tomorrow, you will become what we call complete. You will return to a pure energy state and you will regain full knowledge of the universe. You will instantly understand that your life was meant to be brief, that time is not measured the same in our realm, and that you can come back and have a physically manifested experience over and over and over again. That puts this human existence into perspective. That is why we do not have the same view of murder, of abortion, of natural disasters, of famine, of drought, as you do. To us, these things are simply minor bumps in your path, many of which can be overcome during your physical existence, and all of which have been placed in your physical existence in your path by your projection of thought. You say plague, you say mass murder, you say horrific natural event, we say easy come, easy go. It is really as simple as that. We do not seek to upset you, but we do seek to open your eyes to the realities of the universe and to your existence. Your physical existence is delicate. There are any number of things that can end it tomorrow, and most of you are keenly aware of that. So you came to experience a physically manifested existence. You came to interact with your vibrational neighbors who have also physically manifested at this time. You came to explore your beautiful planet, 
to appreciate your vast oceans and blue skies. Breathe in the clean air. Taste delicious food and enjoy sexual encounters. You came to laugh and appreciate and to love. But you also came to place obstacles in your path, as we've said, to experience loss, to experience fear, to experience challenges that must be overcome. This is why, naturally, through your projected thought, you place these things in your future path. It is part of the perfection of your existence. We have compared your physically manifested existence to a work of fiction. Your fiction works have a beginning where the story is set up. Most of the fiction is the middle where there's a protagonist and an antagonist and the protagonist must overcome obstacles to reach a conclusion. And then there is an ending. Your life is exactly the same as this. If you read a story where Jane was born and then she died and that was the end of the story, it would not be very interesting. It would not provide any real experience for the character. Thus, it would not provide any real growth for the character and it would not be very satisfying for the reader. If all you wanted were perfection, were ease, were no obstacles, you would simply remain in your completed state and not manifest physically. When you project yourself into this physical existence in the very beginning, your vibration and the vibration of your mother is a match. But from the moment that match is made, you begin to discern your preference, even in the womb. And by the time you're born, when we say that you are fully manifested in physical form, you have already begun to develop preferences. And in those early days, you begin to become impacted by your surrounding environment. This was your intention. And we will tell you that those of you that are born into difficult environments did so on purpose. And those of you that choose to be born into very easy environments or what is perceived as an easy environment also did so on purpose. You see, the greater the challenges of the environment that you're born into, the stronger you will become in this physically manifested environment. So many of you choose challenges early on to gain strength and momentum at a young age. Others choose a relatively easy environment, yet become bored very quickly. And at a relatively young age, they begin placing obstacles in their paths out of boredom. This is why you often see children born into great privilege getting themselves into trouble. Or the young celebrity who is considered to have the world at their feet suddenly misbehaving and receiving negative attention. Of course, this misbehaving or negative attention is all from your human perspective. From our perspective, it is the perfection of your existence. For a life that is nothing but ease, nothing but what you call green lights, is not very interesting, does not increase momentum, and does not add to the energy that is the origin of all creation. So why are you here? You are here to experience joy. You are here to be free. And you are here to place obstacles in your path for the sheer joy of overcoming them. But you are the decider. You are the one who gets to choose which obstacles you place and what impact they have. You create this entire life experience through your projected thought, and you decide when it ends. Every single time. So your purpose is joy. Your purpose is to seek expansion. Your purpose is to experience anything that you discern as your preference in this physically manifested existence, and then your purpose is is to become complete and return to a non-physically manifested state of pure energy. There is no set path. 
There are no rules. There is no right. There is no wrong. And there is no judgment from our perspective. It is all up to you. And if you find yourself in what is perceived as a negative spiral, rushing toward a completed state sooner than what is usually desired, that is your choice. There is nothing wrong with taking that path, but it does not have to be that way. With your power, you placed yourself in that negative spiral. You bound yourself up and unwanted ideas and projected that thought into your future path, and now you are living it. But at any point prior to completion, you can reverse this course. You all came equipped with all the tools that you need to do this at any time while you are physically manifested. And how do you do that? You do that through meditation, by quieting your mind, reaching a place of neutrality, and focusing on what you desire. If your negative spiral has been going on for quite some time and has gained great momentum, is moving with great velocity, you will need to work your way backward to reach this place of neutrality. You decelerate the velocity of the negative spiral by withdrawing your attention from it. For you exist in a polarized universe, and you cannot shift instantly from negative to positive without first reaching neutrality. We have witnessed David over the years face problems that in the moment seemed impossible to overcome. He felt like he was in a box, that he couldn't get out, and that there was no returning from the negativity of this situation. But he learned to quiet his mind. He used his imagination to think of things in the way that he desired them to be. And soon his spiral reversed course. In little time, he gained new perspective. Fresh ideas came into his mind. And he step by step, through his thinking, wound his way out of the dilemma. People have told him over the years that he's resilient, that he is the most resourceful person they've ever met. All of this is derived from an ability an ability that he developed early on in life to recognize the downward spiral that you all experience at one point or another and to stop in that moment to throw the brakes on, to back out of it, to reach a place of neutrality and focus on what is desired. You have all experienced the joy of overcoming obstacles in your lives. If you ask us what your life's purpose is, we will tell you that is it, the joy of overcoming your obstacles, the growth that occurs when you realize your vast personal power, this power that drives you, that allows you to live a joyful, physically manifested existence and adds power to your stream and ultimately power to the stream that is the origin of all life. That is all. Hi, everybody. It's David. I'm back. I just got through listening to the playback of the stream's message. And I have to tell you that I, I enjoy listening to them so much. And I will go back. And I know it sounds arrogant because I'm essentially listening to my own voice. But I know that it's not me at all. It's certainly the stream that's coming through loud and clear. And uh, I can listen to them again and again and again and get different messages from them. I, I do the same with the Abraham Hicks material. There's just so much depth in, uh, in things that sound so simple sometimes. But if you listen again and again and again, you get different uh, interpretations of the message and new messages. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was very enlightening uh, when I first started having these types of conversations with them. Uh, that, you know, that we're here for really simple purposes uh, of, of expansion and contributing to the energy stream that powers uh, the universe. So that makes you realize how powerful you are and how important you are in all of this and why you come here, and why, most importantly to me, why you did not come here just to live this perfect existence. You know, a lot of people discover the law of attraction and discover their personal power and set forth uh, trying to create an absolutely perfect, pristine life. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Of course, we want to focus on what we want. I would never sit 
and try to create unwanted things to place in my path for the joy of overcoming them. But I think the, uh, the life itself gives us plenty of that just naturally. But I want to make sure that it's, it's a natural level that I can sustain and I can handle. And I do spend most of my time in joy doing the things that I want to do, associating with the people that I wish to associate with, driving the cars that I want to drive, eating the food that I want to eat, going on vacations in the places that I want to explore. That's what I focus on. And at this point, most of my, what I would call obstacles or negative manifestations or things that were placed there before, and they're fewer and further between now than they ever have been before. So I think that you can get pretty close to a constant state of joy, but certainly there are things that are going to pop up in your path that you've got to then overcome. And I certainly don't want to get bored. And I think embarking on this new venture of creating these podcasts and writing this book and getting more involved in social media. You know, I've been really keeping to myself the past several years, just enjoying life. And I, now I'm realizing that I'm creating something that I very much wish to share with the universe. And I'm going to have to get out and interact more to do that. And that's creating a little bit of uh, some obstacles for me, for sure, getting something like this off the ground. But I'll tell you that I've done some marketing and some things like that that I've started working on uh, for the website and, and for the podcast uh, promotion. And it's amazing when I connect to the stream, how these, uh, these words just flow and these things come out that I think, gosh, you know, I couldn't have written that on my own. I'm so glad that I have this connection to the stream. And, and the good news is, is that you all have this ability. You can all connect to your personal power and get this type of uh, divine insight, if you will, uh, that, that I've tapped into. But I certainly enjoy my ability to channel and I certainly enjoy uh, being able to share it with all of you. This has really brought new meaning to my life. I've had a pretty full, rich, uh, and, and certainly interesting life up until now. But this is a whole new venture for me, and, and I'm really enjoying it. And I hope that the podcasts are doing something for somebody out there. I know I've gotten some uh, positive feedback already, which is fantastic. It makes me feel really good. And I definitely have some topics that I want to cover. I talked a little bit about um, addiction uh, in a previous uh, podcast, and some people have asked about that, wanting sources perspective on addiction. So I think in the next episode, we're going to tackle that. Uh, you know, I haven't lived a life uh, where I've had a lot of addiction. I have been ad addicted to painkillers. I've certainly been addicted to food. Uh, you, know, you get addicted to Facebook and uh, social media and things like that. You can really become addicted to anything uh, that's a distraction from your world because, you know, you're not necessarily in a good place. You've turned the volume down on your stream, as they say, and you need to do something to soothe that uh, lack of connection. And uh, I really want uh, Source to come forth and give you their perspective on addictions, how you get there and how you unwind that and how you overcome it. Uh, while their answer uh, is always the same to everything, it's good to hear directly from them. I think it helps people that are suffering with these different things uh, gain new perspective and, and help you understand uh, people that you may know that are uh, struggling with these things. So I think in our next episode, we're going to cover addiction. And if there's anything else that you would like to hear covered in a future podcast, please email us at thestreamofdavid at gmail.com. Again, that's thestreamofdavid at gmail.com. I want to thank you all for joining, uh, for supporting this podcast and listening today. I look forward to hearing your feedback, and I'll get the more information up on the blog soon so that we can all interact there as well. Thank you again, and have a great day.